Hey guys, so in today's video we're going to be doing a standard yet amazing drag to beat your friends in any cars. So the first thing I'll be whipping out is my 1988 Monte Carlo SS. If you already know how to go into the garage and upgrade section, skip to the next chapter in the description. Now what you're going to want to do once you're in your car, head over to the garage. Now that you're in the garage, all you want to do is click to where it says garage and then go to upgrades and tuning. And then it's time to start upgrading. The first thing you'll do once you go into the upgrade shop is go to conversion where you'll be able to swap the engines, uh, drive steering swap, or the aspirations like the turbo or supercharger. Now the size of the engine that you'll get will vary because more or less horsepower can change the way you want to tune. So in order to fix that, I'll show you in a second what to do. Now before I get too far, let me quickly tell you the upgrades you'll need. Now for my car anyways, I decided to choose the racing 7.2 liter V8, which if you upgrade it properly, you'll get around 1350 horsepower or so. Once you've got that installed, head over to where you see the turbo logo, click on that, and I personally sometimes like to choose a supercharger or turbo. Uh, if you do choose a turbo like this, uh, I mean it says 1297 horsepower right now, but it does your weight. And once you install the turbo here, you can go over to uh, engine and then you should be able to upgrade it here as well. So you're still getting actually five more horsepower and it's just lighter. So if you were to upgrade your car, like a drag car like this, uh, I would recommend using turbos just because uh, they're lighter weight and give a little bit more horsepower. But if you like the sound of the super supercharger wine, then I'd go for the supercharger. But that's just me. Once you're done with conversion, head over to aero and appearance where you won't really able to be able to do much with the front bumper just because it adds weight and doesn't look that good. However, if you go to a rear wing, you can see there's three different options, the stock option, the Forza wing in this game which doesn't look good and adds weight, or just completely get rid of the wing and lose a few pounds, which I've done with this tune. Then you can head out to hood where if you choose any of these hoods, it's going to be lighter than the stock hood, about 8-ish pounds or so. Once you're done with that, head over to tires and rims where things start to get a bit interesting. Now obviously, please don't do race tires. I've seen so many people that use race tires and it blows my mind. So please, if you're going to do this, use drag tires because they're just so much better. And I don't know why people do other ones. Uh, now once you're done with that, make the front tire width stock. Don't even touch it. It's perfect. And then have her to rear tire with, make that as thick as possible, you're going to get a better reaction with it. Uh, rim size, I don't really bother with rim size, uh, just because it adds weight. Uh, rim styles, now if you choose a certain rim, uh, you're able to actually like reduce some weight, depending on what car it is. Most cars are going to reduce the weight if you get some different rims. Uh, I have the stock ones on here, but I could be wrong. Yeah, I think I do have the stock ones on here. But if you do want to get different rims, perfectly fine. Uh, it would actually reduce some weight, so that'd be pretty good. All right, so for front track width and rear width, make that as thick as possible. Extend it, extend it, extend it. <laughs> Head over to drivetrain, where you can fully upgrade your clutch and your driveline. But for dif your differential, make sure that's on race or rally diff. I typically do either or. Um, doesn't make a huge difference it's your choice now when you go to transmission and sport are going to be heavier so what i like to do is use race transmission it already comes with a six speed which means you're able to go through gears but not so many that are actually slower once you're done with that head over to platform and handling where we get to the fun stuff now the first thing you need to do is go to your brakes fully upgrade that and for your spring and damper make sure it's at rally suspension uh, for some reason, I still don't even know why, but if you do use rally suspension, uh, it makes a bit of a difference coming to drag tuning. It maxes out your ride height, and it just kind of works. Now, obviously, fully upgrade your anti-roll bars, front and rear. Um, my fuse a roll cage, like Sport or Classic or whatever it's called. I don't really use it, but you can if you want to. It helps with traction at the beginning for some reason. You can do it if you want. Uh, and then, finally, use rate reduction, full reduct it, obviously, because the lighter your car is, the faster it'll go. And, finally, once you're done with that, head over where you'll be able to do your final upgrades. But if your car does have oil and cooling, make sure to not upgrade it, as the horsepower to weight distribution show 
it's not that good. I wouldn't can if you want to. So, everything from the upgrade shop you should be all set with, which means now it's time to head over to your custom tuning. Now that everything is done in the upgrade shop, make sure to go over to custom tuning where you head to tires. Make sure your tires for the front are all the way up and the rear is all the way low. Uh, so 15 for the rear, 55 for the front. Now you should already start to feel a little bit of a difference in your launch, so it should either be spinny or grip really well. And if your car is spinning badly, here's what you can do to fix it. Uh, I'm going to ignore the gearing from now because we will go back to it just in a second. Go to alignment and make sure everything is at zero except for your front caster which should be at seven or around seven. Once you go to annual roll bar, make sure the front's always soft and the rear is always stiff. And then you head over to springs where you'll have the same thing. The front is soft, the rear is stiff, and the ride height should automatically be maxed out so I wouldn't touch it. Uh, now we are at damping where I like my front to be always soft and my rear to be always stiff. However, for bump stiffness, I like my front to be stiff. And then for the rear, I like it to be around 14 or 15. I have it at 14.7 because I've noticed that's been the best. Uh, arrow, ignore it. Doesn't do much. Braking, I mean, unless you're making a race tune, I wouldn't touch this. And then for finally differential, I like to have both acceleration and deceleration at 100%. Once you head out of the garage or your house, head over to any drag strip you'd like, preferably this one since it's actually road and not like grassy and somewhat pavement. And uh, make sure you use your gas and brake. Um, hopefully you're using manual or manual with clutch, preferably manual with clutch, and just see what happens. Now sometimes you'll get something that I just had, which is spinny at the beginning and then grips up after the first or second gear. Which is pretty common if you don't warm up your tires with some start, some cars. But anyways, after you did your first run, you should be able to see what was good and what wasn't. So if you notice your gears are too short, as if your first only went to 70 and then your second only went to like 100 and that was too short for you, you could head over to tune your car again and then go to gearing. Now for my funnel drive, I like to have it at 3.73. Just because I've always used that, I've been using it for a really long time, and it just kind of seems to work. Now, uh, just real quickly, I'll show you what my first, second, third, all the way down to six looks like. Uh, it looks pretty solid. I'm, I'm still proving it little by little every time I race someone against it. Just slowly starting to prove it more and more. But this is kind of my startup tune, and I'm just kind of rolling with it. Every time you make a drag tune, however, if you look to the graph to the right of the screen, probably gonna zoom it in but it should look something like this where you have um, like a steady incline it looks like from your graph instead of it going like a bunch of mountains looking it should be just like kind of like a solid increase or decrease if that makes any sense so finally once you get your tune to your satisfaction you should be able to have a launch like this And you should be able to beat your friends. But anyways, I think that's going to be the end of the video. Hopefully that guys helped. Anyways, if you want to see more of this type of content for tips and tricks on Forza, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.